Red Compass Rose. And you're listening to CFRC. At 101.9 FM. Let's hear a song from these guys. David? I'm David from Red Compass Rose, and this is Open Road. This is Hayden with CFRC Live Sessions, and I'm here with Red Compass Rose. Red hey. Compass Rose, how's it going? How's it going? <laughs> you guys kind of have that like rock, solid rock influence. Let's talk about your style and where do you get that from? For sure. So um, uh, I'm sort of all over the place when it comes to influences. Um, 
what I grew up with, like when my parents were playing, my mom would play a lot of 70s, 80s, 90s on the radio. She'd also listen to a lot of jazz. Um, and I actually started out kind of playing jazz on the drums. And then later I got onto the more modern metal type stuff. And then now I'm playing here where it's a bit more of a classic sound. But in terms of um, musical influences otherwise, like I, I'm really all over the place. Like uh, I DJ as well. I run In the House on CFRC. So if you're interested. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. Ter- ter- tune into that. Um, you know, I've always really been into a lot of dance music too, like particularly house, some drum and bass, dubstep, hard style, like a lot of, you know, a lot of different stuff that you often don't hear in Kingston. Yeah. And um, you, you kind of blend that up all into Red Compass Rose. Uh, yeah, a little bit. I'd say when it comes to Red Compass Rose, my biggest kind of pull that's not that rock sound, I would say is more of the jazz side. Um, because right. I spent a lot of time practicing that on the drums. That's kind of really what gave me my independence and, and things like that as I learned that all through playing jazz. And so sometimes, you know, when I'm playing on a on a track, even a cover, I'll kind of add to it a bit by, like, kind of make it a little groovier. Um, sometimes, only only sometimes, sometimes you really need that straight time kind of feel, but sometimes I feel a uh, little bit more of a swing to the record. It's people dancing more. Right. And, and Ben, let's talk about you as well. You're, you're kind of like bring some sort of metal musical influence to it. I see you headbanging on the stage and all that. Yeah. Um, well, I feel like I had a pretty generic uh, musical upbringing, to be honest. Not that different from a lot of people who play guitar and are into metal. Like I started with Eric Clapton, Van Halen, and then slowly made my way to Dio, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. And now it's a combination of everything from... Uh, uh, I guess Rammstein to uh, uh, I don't even know. Listen to Bring Me the Horizon lately. You got me onto them. Oh really? But I, um, but I, I don't know if it really. Co- I don't know how much of that really comes out. But well, I've um, seen you guys cover uh, Iron Maiden and uh, we did. Yeah, Dad. we we did play the Trooper. Oh, that, was a fun um, one. that one was really really fun. We've also covered a lot of you know songs that I think. You know, they were hits, but sort of things we really wanted to play. We played, uh, you know, You Really Got Me. And obviously Jump's mm. the Van Halen song everyone knows, but I think You Really Got Me is a, a, a great song. Right. Oh, people definitely know that one. Well, yeah, yeah but, like, it's it's not like Jump where everyone goes, Whoa, That's true. God. Jump's one of the jump's one of the real crowd right. pleasers. Like, You Really Got Me is like... Especially so. when you guys bring those keys out. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Callan does a really good job of that. That's he's, definitely... He's a crazy keyboard player. Oh, yeah. And it's definitely a, a huge advantage. Like, I know a lot of bands, and even, like, bands that I've been in before, they never had a keyboard player, but it, it's something really really special yeah. to have you, you can actually thank me for that i was the one i was like we kind of need i think we need keyboards yeah i guess i was so, like, yeah i remember that i was like i was like we need the flexibility like if we can't just be stuck to one sound. i mean Callan, Callan is like a really crazy musician though he's on bait like he's a multi-instrumentalist oh yeah like out of like, he's probably the best musician of all of yeah us. i mean keyboard, oh, it's always cool to see like a, a instrument swap on stage and then when when he gets the blindfold over his face oh, the keys, that's nah, oh yeah i forgot yeah, about yeah, that yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah i completely forgot about that too i never i because like none of us looked at him when he did yeah it. yeah and uh, that's actually kind of oh, funny. Yeah, we didn't been, look at him while he was doing that. Ben, one thing I do want to mention with that with the headbang, you also got the hair for it, man. Oh, I mean, yeah, certainly. But certainly. isn't it? But isn't it also like you know, you, a lot of bands you see people go up there and they kind of just bob to the music mm. and you know just it's like come on, you gotta you gotta give it some uh, some some soul, some passion, and oh. show at least that you're having fun, or at the very least uh, hide your face so people <laughs> can't see you cry. <laughs> um, it's it's so. the kind of thing where it takes it takes like one or two people to make it feel safe to sort of go crazy and mm. headbang and uh you know so like when one person in the crowd starts going crazy then the people around them start going crazy and it spreads and spreads and when the person on stage is the one doing it it helps a lot yeah oh definitely yeah. Yeah. yeah that's that's one thing definitely too is is at least if, at least at our first show if like playing drums like stage presence is basically just built in mm-hmm. but yeah. uh if I wasn't playing the drums, I'd probably look super awkward up there for the first couple of shows. And this came to you really naturally. I was surprised. I know. Like, yeah. like Callum and Callan were always pushing to, you know, maybe make be a little bit more emotive. But like, because you don't have anything else to do. I was just going to say, I mean, if we want to talk about stage presence, like that's yeah. that's your whole job. Yeah, yeah I mean, I thing. just love music. So when the music comes on, I, I come on basically. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. really affirming. Like, you know, I, I don't think I ever said this to you, but it's really nice to see like if one of us is playing a solo. Like if I'm playing a solo or I'm just playing a riff and there's no vocals for that part to look over and see you headbanging going nuts. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah totally. this it's is, also, this is, you know, also it's, it's really cool to see you like open up on stage, like really come out of your shell there. 
Yeah. yeah everybody says that after every show. It, it's know, awesome. I've never seen you, you perform before. They all say that, and they love it. Let's hear another song. Ethan? This next song is called Lawn Chair, My Darling. talk for a moment about the world of being a student band at queens you guys are all in stem i think i think are you all in engineering or no mostly? no uh, me and ethan are the only ones not in engineering okay yeah. but but you're all a stem band and you're all student yeah. band let's talk about that world like how do you guys how do you guys balance it and how do you feel like the student world is is looking for bands hmm i think i think it i guess we could start with how to balance yeah. the work i mean it's it's definitely tough uh, it, it's it definitely gets really tough like um you know there are always these weeks at school where it just suddenly seems like the stars align not in your favor and you really just get screwed um but especially when we were playing sh like shows every week there was a lot of like really stressful weeks where i was like i don't know how i can get it done but i don't know i seem to make time um i think though definitely compared to last year we weren't really playing much last year just for for a host of reasons but Last year, I'd say the the workload was definitely a lot higher, um, and you know that wasn't that wasn't sustainable for many reasons. So uh, this year, this year it's lightened up a bit, and so it's easier to kind of make time for the band and, and just do. You know, it doesn't feel like school's consuming my whole life anymore, but it's still there's still times where things get tight. I think we all implicitly kind of decided that 
this was going to be one of our higher priorities. Like, obviously, you know, we all want to do well in school. And yeah, some of us, one, some so. of us are doing well in school. Uh, I don't know. I'll comment on that, but, um, you know, I think we all kind of, you know, we never really even talked about it. We all, I think kind of just came to our own understanding that this is something we really all enjoy doing. And it's something we want to put our time towards. Like everyone needs an extracurricular, whether it's, you yeah. know, I was playing video games at home or something, but yeah. like, you know, we this is something we want to put our time towards and, yeah. And, yeah. and it literally shows on stage when the band like cares about it, as not only oh. caring about oh. the gig in the moment, but caring about the band in a part as a part of their life you know yeah what I mean? yeah. yeah definitely I, I like to think we do that but i that's not for us to judge <laughs> <laughs> that's for the audience <laughs> <laughs> but and then and let's talk about the kingston music scene a little bit broader like you guys are branching out there you're definitely regulars at the mansion at this point yeah. um and you guys are sort of out and about people are seeing your posters and stickers and things yeah what can you say about sort of the world of kingston music yeah um one thing that i would say though is that um um, I've found that there's a lot of people that they want to go see things, but th somehow it just it doesn't come up on their on their radar. It doesn't come up mm. on their feed. And there and like one of my, like for example, one of my friends, he's like, oh, I want to come see you guys. And then like, m he's not the most active on social media, so you may yeah. not see the stories. He doesn't check the stories. I mean, I think a lot of this ties in though with just uh, all of us being in STEM. You know, there's so many times where I've invited friends to shows, and they they're like, yeah, oh, man, I'm so busy, I can't make it. And you know, it makes it harder to promote things. But you know, eventually there'll be a there will be a free, you know, free night or whatever they'll have to come out, right? People make themselves free. I mean, we, at that Queen's Music Club Battle of the Bands, there's quite a good turnout. For oh, yeah, on a Sunday, too. That was that was really impressive. Yeah. I think it's easier when you have a lot of bands playing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. there were, I mean, there were was it five bands, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, we've, I, you know, we've played shows with, we did a show with Mobius Trip back right at the beginning of the semester. And uh, with Ooh, also, good turnout. And that, that was, I think, we, yeah, we went over capacity. We, yeah. we, we sold that place out, and it was... Uh, and that was a great show, and a lot of that is thanks to Mobius for you know having uh, you know being a being around longer than we've been, so yeah. they can pull a lot of people, and also just us going ham when it comes to guerrilla marketing, like I literally know. pesting pestering all of our friends to come out, yeah. and then we stopped. Like I think that's why attendance sort of dropped off for a while, is because one we were opening for a lot of bands, you know, either touring through or just you know, think, invited us to. And so we didn't really promote it as much as we normally would when yeah. we're headlining. I mean, I also think though, even, even if it's your good friend, there's only, there's only so many asks you can make of them, right? Oh yeah. You know, it's totally. like they, it won't be fun to them to see you every week. Like, and, and I also think that doing that, you, you kind of do become stale too, right? If you're yeah. constantly preparing for a show, you can't, you know, push your sound forward. Let's hear another song, Ben. Hi. I'm Ben from Red Compass Rose, and this is Center of the Universe. Come to where the legends will 
You guys, we saw you play all over town. Uh, Center of the Universe reminds me of when I saw you guys play at the Battle of the Bands at Clark Hall. Um, but I don't think you guys played that song there, did you? We did not. Yeah, I think... It wasn't ready. I, I think we just started kind of like trying to put it... like It was written for a while, but when it came to actually performing it, I think it was that week we actually started playing it at practice. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, like the, the process, at least for most of these songs, like Open Road and a couple of our others went the same way is that they usually start off as some kind of uh, demo, just like either a backing track ripped from YouTube, like a drum track, and then uh, I'll play guitar over it, or whoever's coming up with it, they'll uh, play their part and then send it to the others so they can try to put something to it, or at least learn how to play it. And uh, so Center of the Universe, uh, I wrote the chorus to that mm. over a year ago, and wrote the riff or some version of it, and then it sat. For that long and when we only really started putting it together this fall did, did you write center of the universe when we were playing together or was it before that i can't remember i think we were playing together but probably i i can't yes we were playing together um but uh that one i uh, to be uh, to be real i really don't know when that one came up but i i remember writing yeah. the chorus and then you wrote the rest of the lyrics but it yeah. sounds like it's been cooking for a while Oh yeah, yeah, it's been cooking. Yeah, we we've had we had a good amount of time to, to simmering. Practice it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for yeah. a while. And and does Ethan have like a strong hand in that? Because it's his voice. Like, do you do you, um, Ethan when you, when you're writing? Do you think about how writing for your voice? Um, I I, I for me it kind of just comes. Like I just like I hear it. I hear the melody. I'm like okay, the uh, the like the riff and all the song. And I just what fits, and then it just comes. Right, sweet. And um, where can people find you guys to see what's coming up next? Yeah, well, we're on Instagram, so it's Red Compass Rose. Uh, they'll find us that way. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll pretty much post all of our dates up there um, and either on stories or posts. We got a show coming up on January 27th, uh, so that'll probably be the next show that we play. We're, we're a little done for the semester. Mm. But, so it's just time to, uh, to write some new music. We do have a few songs in the chamber. Coming down so. the pipe. Oh, we got we'll a see. lot. We'll see. we'll see what comes out, but... Um, yeah, and uh, is there anywhere else that we post anything? Um, on the on the street post, lamp post. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just check your check local. Just, just walk around. Just walk street around light. the anywhere near Queen, Queen's campus, and you'll see. Will do. All right, uh, Ray Compass Rose. Thanks for talking to us. Oh, thanks. Thank for you very us. much. We'll be, hope we'll be back soon. Sun is bright, wheels are dry, flying faster than a day. Right is right, you are right, nothing beats a red corvette. 